Now, when it comes to working with file objects, you have two choices. You can either embed the graphic inside of the Authorit database, or you can link to that graphic somewhere out on your network. The difference is that the embedded graphic will be saved inside of the Authorit database. An external copy of that graphic does not need to exist outside of the database. It's all being managed internally in Authorit. Now with linking, linking graphics exist outside of the library somewhere on your network. All right, it would need to exist in a location that's available to all of the authors that would be publishing that graphic, so some shared network directory. So that graphic is linked to the file object, meaning the file object knows the folder that the graphic lives in, and it knows that graphic's file name but that graphic is not saved inside of the library. So let's take a look at file objects now and author it. All right, let's open up an existing file object here. All right, so here's a copy of that graphic that we just saw inside of our presentation. And in this example, we can see here the source type is set to embedded. This is a graphic that is saved inside of the library. All right, it is actually inside of the database. Now you have two choices, remember. You can embed or link. If I go to create a new file object, you'll see that the templates associated with your graphics in the library are either geared towards embedding or linking. So by default, if you were to create a new author a library, you would get these templates inside of your library, and they're designed for either linking or embedding. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and base my new file object on no template, just so that you can see all of the object properties that are available. If I base it on a template, remember that the file object is going to inherit those properties from the template, and I would like to show you what those properties are, so I'm going to keep the template set to none here. I go ahead and give my file object a name. Remember that every object must have a description. We go ahead and click Apply here, and when I do that, remember that that saves the object but doesn't close it. If I wanted to save and close the object, then I would click the OK button instead. All right, so I've based this object on no template for the time being, so that means I can change pretty much all the properties that you see here. Now let's go to the Print tab. Take a look at your options here in the Print tab. So these are the object properties for the graphic or OLE object that you plan on associating with your print publications, your documents that you publish to Word or PDF. You'll notice here your first option, source type, is asking you what type of file do you plan on associating with this file object? Is it an embedded picture or OLE object? Is it a linked picture file? And if so, is it in one of these formats? Is it a linked document file, linked OLE object, or a linked HTTP address? I'm going to go ahead and select embedded picture or OLE object here so that we can see what happens when you embed a graphic in the library. So I'll leave that as embedded picture. So the question is, how do I get my graphic inside of this file object now? Well, to do that, you'll go over to this preview area here, and what you want to do is insert the picture or OLE object, depending on what your goal is. I'm going to go ahead and select Insert Picture. 
And I have a graphics directory already set up on my computer. This graphic can be located either on your hard drive or on your network location because we plan on embedding it inside of the database so that once it's in the database, it's available to all users. Let me go ahead and select this first graphic here, Accessories JPEG, and click Open. All right. So now what I've done is saved this JPEG file inside of the library. Now I have some other options here on the other side. I can choose what output format to publish this file to. If I leave it to source format, then it is saved in its original format. So it was a JPEG when I embedded it. It will be a JPEG when I publish it. But I can choose to have author it convert the graphic to a different format for me if I'd like to. All right. We can also choose to have a particular style assigned to that graphic when that graphic is published to my Word format. So let's say I always used a special screenshot style. When I uh, was working with my screenshots, I could set up my file object template so that the screenshot style was always listed here under paragraph style. All right, now down at the bottom of the screen, I have some additional options for sizing. I can size by percentage or I can size by centimeters. All right, so if you're going by centimeters, you need to know your metric system there. You can also choose whether you'd like a caption for this graphic. Let's go ahead and put one in there now. Acme Accessories. And you can choose what label you would like. I'll select Figure. And then where you would like that caption to appear above or below the file. All right, now last but not least, we have our borders options. You can choose to have a black border appear on the top, bottom, left, and right of that graphic file when it is published to your Word or PDF output. You're not going to see this paragraph style or these borders until you actually publish that file object. All right, now the help and the web tab are very similar, so let's we'll go ahead and browse over to the web tab. Source type again, embedded or linked. Now this time the, the file formats are a little bit different for linked picture files because your web output is compatible with different graphic formats than say your print output, for example. And then you've also got some options here for linking an AVI file, linking to an HTML file, or to a web server. All right, so instead of embedding, this time I'll go ahead and show you a linked graphic. So we'll select the linked picture file option. All right, now this time, since I've selected to link the graphic, I have to tell author where that graphic is located. So I need to give author the directory name and the file name of that graphic. So let's go out to directory and I'll browse to my graphics directory, wherever that may be. And in your case, if you do plan on going the route of linking, I would highly recommend that your graphics are saved on a network share location so that all of your authors have access to those graphics. Now for file name, we'll go out and select our file. I'll go ahead and select a different one this time. All right, and I have the same options here for output as I can leave it as source format. So if it came in as a JPEG, it will publish as a JPEG, or I can have author it convert it to a different format. I can include an alt tag with this graphic so that when it publishes to HTML, it will have an alt tag display over it when the user mouses over the graphic file. By default, the alt tag is whatever you've placed in the description field, but you can change that if you'd like to. 
Now over here under sizing and spacing, you can have author it resize the graphic by percentage or by pixels. You can associate an image map with your graphic. You can associate video options. So if you were to link an AVI file to this file object, you can tell author it what controls you would like to have for how that video displays. All right, and last but not least, we have here for linked HTML. If that HTML page that you were linking to had some uh, images or files being referenced inside of it, then you would reference those files in this box here. All right, so let's go ahead and click Apply. So what we've done here is embedded a graphic in the print tab and we've linked to a graphic in the web tab. So we've got two different graphics now displaying inside of our file object and that is perfectly acceptable. Another example of this is let's say that you had graphics that you wanted to be a higher resolution in your print output than your web output. So in your print tab, you would link to the higher resolution graphic, and then in your web tab, link to the lower resolution graphic. So as long as those graphics either had a different file name or they were located in a different directory from one another, then that is a perfectly acceptable practice to have.